Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited to have this next guest on the show. Uh, he was a silver medalist in Greco-Roman rep wrestling, representing the great country of Denmark, coming off a big win two months ago uh, in uh, his UFC debut, uh, impressively stopping his opponent in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. We're so happy to have on the show the man they call the Olympian, Mark O. Madsen. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you so much. So, so much to talk about, my friend. I was really impressed uh, with, uh, with your fight there in Denmark. Now, that was your first UFC fight. Was it a bit of a double-edged sword fighting right there in front of your countrymen and women in Denmark? I'm sure it was a great feeling. You didn't have to have jet lag uh, or, that, or like that, but was, wasn't there a bit of pressure also that you certainly didn't want to lose or, or, or really look bad in front of the hometown crowd? Where was your mind uh, mindset as far as that? Well, I, I always try to keep my focus uh, on the fight, like staying in the present. Um, but if, if I have to analyze, of course, there was a lot of pressure. Uh, it was my first, first UFC fight. I was bummed up being a, a co-main event, so it was <laughs> it was quite a, a debut. So a lot of pressure, and uh, you know, it, it's always it's always nice to be fighting uh, in front of a home crowd. But but naturally, that's that is the place you want to perform at your best uh, in front of your your home crowd and your country, your family, your coaches. So a lot of pressure, but I I guess that's that's where you really have to be be the best able to pr perform when when you're under the most pressure. Absolutely. And as a wrestler, I'm sure that gave you a really great background, having probably competed in well over a thousand matches in your amateur wrestling career leading up to that great silver medal in the Olympics. Yeah, I, I actually think I have accumulated more than 3,000 wrestling matches. So wow. I, I've been, you know, I've, I've been at this for a long time. I've been wrestling since, since I could walk. I've been wrestling since... Uh, Five, six years old. So I've been uh, I've been doing this a lot, and I've been, you know, I've competed at the, the biggest stages in the world, Europeans, World Championship. I'm a three-time Olympian, so I've been at uh, you know in, in similar situations where there was a lot of a lot of focus, a lot of pressure, and at the end of the day, it, it, you know, sport is about being capable uh, of performing when when you're under pressure. Absolutely. And you competed mostly in wrestling uh, at 163 pounds U.S. weight. Is that right? Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be the, the weight division there. Right. And so the thought uh, of choosing a weight class for your MMA career, was it always uh, apparent that 170 pounds welterweight was going to be the choice? Or was there some debate on that? Well, I'm, I'm fighting lightweight now. So oh, that was the, okay. That was the first time actually in 18 years. I had to cut down to light lightweight. Uh, the last time I was that light was back in 2001. Uh, it was at the Youth European Championship. Uh, I wrestled in Turkey. Uh, I, I took a silver medal there, but but that's you know more than 18 years ago. Uh, I've, I've been that light, so I've had most of my fights in, in the welterweight division. But I'm, I'm being coached by Martin Kampman former UFC fighter, and he told me, you know what, you want to make an impact, you have to cut down to lightweight, and we'll take it from there. So that was a, a bit of a challenge as well, cutting down to, to uh, lightweight, but we overcame, and it was actually a nice nice weight cut. Very cool. I'm glad to hear that, and forgive me for... Uh for uh, not uh, being aware of that, not to be negative on the great uh, website SureDog, but I have to thank them for uh, inaccurately having uh, Mark down as a welterweight. And uh, so forgive me, Mark, for, for not doing that. We'll change the graphic also uh, under you. But, uh, you know, SureDog's usually a great website, not to put them down, but they have Mark listed as a welterweight, so a lightweight. That makes sense, and I, and I had thought that your fight was a lightweight, and so that is, yeah, that's a bit lower than you've been in for quite a while, but it's good to hear that the weight cut went well. And as a wrestler, it seems like you guys just have that amazing discipline. I mean, it's not easy for anyone to do, but it seems like the guys that that have no wrestling background will frequently uh, find it nearly impossible or, or end up getting sick uh, when making these weight cuts. But you guys that are wrestlers, 
just seem like you just you're you're able to suck it up is it is it you know and i think this is a question that i haven't heard asked before is it just the knowledge of how to do it or just the, the mental strength and fortitude of being able to just handle the pain and the deprivation and the dehydration or is it a combination of both what do you think helps you the most uh and and, and these uh experienced wrestlers like yourself be able to just make weight time after time after time yeah it's it's a good question and I, i'm not sure that i'll be able to answer it uh on behalf of, of all the wrestlers out there sure uh, i i do believe i had a lot of i have a lot of experience in cutting weight i've been cutting weight you know my my entire life basically and when it comes down comes down to sport it's it's about planning executing and evaluating afterwards and i've been doing that a lot so we made up a, a good plan of, of how to cut the weight it took me around seven weeks to uh, to cut that weight and then i dehydrated the dehydrated the, the rest so it, it's you know it's about having a good good and sound plan and it's also about sticking to that plan i mean it, it's not going to be fun it's not going to be easy cutting the weight no matter who you are i i don't care people say oh it was an easy cut you know if you have to cut a lot of weight it, it will <laughs> it yeah. will be a challenge and yeah you make a good plan and then you stick to it absolutely and you mentioned martin campman he was a fighter i always liked and i i want to let you know i've been following ufc since i was quite young uh, actually a friend of mine uh his father had the press kit for ufc one before the event and i actually had it in my hand for a little while a copy of it so uh big fan i think i followed martin's entire career he was he was pretty much the only very successful mma fighter from denmark or is there others that i am overlooking i would say martin kempman is a, a danish mma legend yeah he was he was one of the pioneers he has you know more ufc fights uh, than the rest of us UFC guys now have combined. So, so he's a he's a true legend. And I mean, the level he was at, the, the guys he's competing against, he's I I can go as far as saying I'm very grateful to have Martin Kempman as my coach and and have him a part of my team. Yeah, absolutely, and I would be as well. And and that's the next thing I was going to say. You are training where he trained for most of his career at Extreme Couture. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'm 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 here in Vegas. I'm on a five-week camp, uh, camp, and uh, I'm having most of my workout, most of my training. I'm I'm having that at uh, Extreme Couture, and it's you know such a great gym, great guys. You know, Eric Nixick. Yeah, all Absolutely. around. It's just uh, you know I'm I'm very grateful to have guy best of the best uh, surrounding me, pushing me, and uh, yeah, without a doubt. Sure my, my fight game will will develop absolutely i'm sure it will have you met randy yet yeah i've met randy a couple of times he's he's in the gym a uh, couple of times so i bet there's some great insight that he can share with you coming from the high wrestling background and both of you were greco i know so i'm sure he's probably had some good uh insight for you yeah and i actually had the opportunity uh, of you know getting some insight directly from randy and I mean, talking to a guy that knows exactly where I'm strong and what I can use in, in MMA uh, based on my Greco-Roman background, it, it has just helped me a lot. Um, I've also tried to, you know, to, to handpick guys here in the States who have a, a Greco-Roman background. Um, there's a coach out in California, Daryl Christensen, who's been helping me uh, a lot on, on my transitioning. So, you know, it, it, I think it's all about for me to to handpick um, the best of the best within the Craig Roman wrestling community, and then uh, and see what what I can use from from their knowledge. Absolutely, I'll tell you a funny story, Mark. Uh, I remember when Randy first started his MMA career. I think his first uh, actually his first UFC fight. He, in fact, I think you know what? I think his first MMA fights. Fight uh, was a UFC fight. I think they really didn't have a, too many of the smaller leagues around then, or the regional leagues. And and I remember he came in and had beat a couple of guys that that weren't extremely skillful, and he looked great beating them. But they were big, strong guys. But then he went up against Vitor Belfort, and that was uh, before USADA, so there was no uh, no no one cared what you were putting in your system. And Vitor Belfort looked like he was about you know 40 pounds more muscle 
than he was the rest of his career, and uh, he had his traps were coming up almost to the middle of his face. And uh, everyone thought that Randy Couture was going to get smashed. And I remember he came in, and he went to his, his side of the octagon, and he was kind of warming up, and he was, like, smiling and laughing with uh, his corner people. And I remember thinking, man, this guy's got to be good. If he's going to be laughing and smiling, <laughs> you know, before a fight that people say he's going to have his head knocked off by a man who is considered po possibly the best striker in the UFC at that time, that he's got to have some skill. And he really did use his Greco. He used his dirty boxing, and he, he really, you know, won an impressive fight. I remember the Jeff Blatnick, uh, may he rest in peace. You may have heard of him. He was the gold medalist in Greco from the United States in 1984. I'm sure you've heard of him. I remember... He was so happy, yelling out, Randy Couture has stopped Vitor Belfort. And he is yelling, and it's really unusual for him because he was very calm. But, yeah, Randy was amazing. And I noticed the same relaxed vibe from you. And, and I, I cite the interview after your fight as well where you went to the the table there. I, I think Tyron Woodley was there uh, and, and uh, Karen Bryan. I'm not sure who else, but you just struck me as a very – upbeat, positive, relaxed, and composed person. Is that your nature? Has it always been? Or, or was wrestling a big part of how you kind of became, uh, you know, that, that you know, composed and easygoing? Yeah. Again, it, it's a really good question. I, I think that's a nice quote within the wrestling community saying, once you wrestled, everything else in life is easy. So I, I think there's an important lesson, you know, never underestimate a wrestler. Um, I, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I bring with me in the, the octagon. And I know if I get into those positions, I'm going to be hard to beat. That's, that's a, I'll make it a long day at the office for my opponent. So, so I know what I bring into the, uh, the octagon and that, that, that gives me some, some, you know, comfort in there. And, uh, I think it's really about being as relaxed, composed and positive as possible as possible you know performing under huge pressure being positive really helps you uh, a lot in there absolutely i remember the great late bruce lee said that if you're relaxed you can strike the quickest and be the most efficient and i'm sure it applies to all combat sports as well i agree 100 percent. yeah so denmark is that a mecca for uh, for uh, collegiate uh, wrestling, I don't think people knew that. I know that most people in the United States feel that uh, if you go anywhere in Europe, you're 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 going to have a hard time finding more than a handful of people that could compete with the uh, American-born wrestlers. So, is it an anomaly that maybe there are just uh, four or five or eight of you guys that were on the Olympic team that that can wrestle, or is somehow Denmark becoming a, uh, a a hidden place, almost like Dagestan with uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov, where we'll find a lot of collegiate wrestlers. Yeah, that, that would be nice, but I, I don't, honestly, I don't think that's the case. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm the most accomplished wrestler, Danish wrestler ever um, in the history of Danish uh, wrestling. So I've, I've done well. I'm, yeah, I've won medals at Europeans, five-time world medalist, three-time Give up. You're too old. You're too slow. You're a joke. I quit. I never quit. You're not good enough. You are not strong enough. No way you last three rounds. You're not a real fighter. You don't stand the chance. I'm Olympian, Olympic medalist. Um, we are trying to build Danish wrestling. Uh, it's also, I think it's important to differentiate a bit. We have three different styles within within wrestling, right? We have the American folk styles, we have freestyle, we have Greco-Roman. Right. And the only the only style we actually practice in Denmark is Greco-Roman. So for American wrestlers coming out with a background in folk style, it will be very hard to find uh, good opponents in, in that style in Denmark because we don't practice it. So. We have one style, and that, that's Gregor Roman. And, you know, over the time span of 10 years, we have been with the 
you know, a part of the Danish Wrestling Federation, we, we have really managed to develop the sport of wrestling in Denmark uh, enormously. Uh, the same month as I retired wrestling, um, the local government gave my club, uh, you know, new wrestling facilities worth of, I think it was two, around $2 million. Wow. So we really, you know, the, the level of facilities are really being, um, being built. So, and I believe as long as you have the facilities put in the work, great things will come in the, the long run. Absolutely. And obviously the more attention that you receive and the better you do, the more it'll help your cause. So I'm sure that's a positive thing, but obviously can also be a little bit of a burden and some weight on your shoulders, but I'm sure you take that in stride. You know, a question for you that I think is, is also something that's, that's interesting to a lot of people that don't have a wrestling background. Suppose you had an opponent that utilizing more of a freestyle wrestling attack or folk style would be more effective against this certain opponent. Would you be able to uh, uh, adapt that, just kind of having the the basics down, and, and and obviously maybe not in a snap of the fingers, but is that something that a good wrestler, Olympic level, like an elite athlete like yourself, could do if given a proper training camp, if you felt that modifying your Greco and, and using a, more of a folk style or freestyle approach would be really effective against an opponent you have? I guess I guess time will tell, right? Uh, what what I can can say is I'm out here in Vegas, on a five, on a five week uh, training camp, and I'm I'm training a lot of different styles. I'm you know training a lot of folk styles, a lot of freestyle. So I'm not relying 100% on my Greg Roman uh, background. That will be a part of my my fight game naturally, but you know I have to excel in in all the disciplines within the the MMA specter. So. When that time comes, uh, you know, it will be an interesting challenge. I like that. Well, you're a humble guy, and I like that. Uh, I've often heard great things about people from Denmark, that you guys are, are not uh, – yeah, you're welcome. That, that you're good people and that you're respectful people and that you don't tend to brag or tend to say negative things, and, and that's cool, and I like that. Uh, you know, and I think that uh, that you're going to be a really popular guy, and uh, and I can see you being really great for our sport. Can you tell us? You said you got into wrestling really young. Was there a history in your family uh, to to you know train in Greco-Roman wrestling, or or what what led you to get into wrestling at that age, and what other sports, uh, if any, did you participate in? Well, I tried a lot of different uh, European sports. I've tried soccer. I've tried handball. A lot of uh, a lot of the popular sports uh, in Denmark, and uh, yeah. So the funny story is, my my grand my grandfather was uh, running the local local arena uh, in my my home city, and um, you know the wrestlers they had a small small area in, in that arena, and uh, he was taking care of me because my my mother had to go to she was studying back then, so he kind of had had. Me with him and he just opened up those big brown doors and introduced me to wrestling uh, at the age of that five or six I, I can't remember but you know I, I just fell in love with wrestling from very very early age and I've been uh, <laughs> I've been doing it ever since absolutely but we don't have there, there's no no one in my family who have wrestled before uh, before me um, first generation wrestler any any younger uh relatives uh, getting into it now that they see your success i have i have four brothers none of them wrestle mm. so as i said I, I am the most accomplished danish wrestler ever and uh, <laughs> i think if if there's a guy to to beat me uh accomplish wise it, it won't come from my family i, I, I can tell it. you that i hear you i hear you I, you know you know what's funny everyone says well if mark is this tough a guy his brothers still have to be probably pretty good athletes just genetically, is that the case, or not necessarily with your brothers? Oh, they have great athletes, uh, great athletes. But you know, we all have a, a call in life. I chose sport. I chose to go that way, and they they have found other um, calls for them. So I I think that's great. You know, we we all have to do what we like. We all have to do what we're passionate about. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. You know, by heart. Um. That's what I've chosen to do, and that's what I'm really passionate about. And you know, if, if we're able to find 
that one thing that makes us happy, you know, we should be grateful. Without a doubt, there's a saying here that uh, if you like what you do or you love what you do, then it's like you you don't have to work a day in your life because it doesn't feel like work. It's a pleasure, right? It is a pleasure, but what I can tell you is I, I you know, yeah, I have some mornings when I get up where that pleasure is uh, exchanged with a bit of pain yes. from the training the day before. But, you know, I love it. And uh, going into the gym, it really makes me happy. You know, I, I get tired. I can, I can be in pain, but at the end of the day, this is what I love doing. This is what I'm passionate about. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely that sacrifice, and it definitely is extremely rigorous and hard on the body. But, you know, emotionally, you know, you like what you're doing, and that, that makes life better, and, you know, that's a great thing. Uh, you have Martin Kempman there, who was also known for his striking and his jujitsu as well. And so it's just a great compliment, uh, I think, to have him there and training with him, him being your coach. So, you know, because obviously everyone wants to be as balanced uh, as they can. I mean, obviously, you probably remember a time when wrestlers were just winning completely from wrestling. The jiu-jitsu guys were winning completely from jiu-jitsu, and now you have to have as as, as good a skill set as you can. Speaking of which, uh, could I get your opinion on this big upcoming fight in a few weeks? You have Colby Covington and you have Kamaru Usman. Uh, both, I believe, are, uh, are and I know, were uh, Division One. Uh, NCAA uh, All-American wrestlers. They're both uh, pretty good strikers, and I think Jitsu might be fair. Do you have any uh, opinion or prediction on that fight? I know a lot of the fans love to hear the, the pro fighters predict fights. Uh, any thoughts on, on who wins that fight, and, and any thoughts with the wrestling background that you have? What What's going to happen when two elite-level wrestlers go against each other? I think the last thing people want to see is that the whole fight stays on its feet and becomes a striking match. But as you know, sometimes that happens because no one can take anyone else down. Can you give me a breakdown on how you think that fight plays out? And, and if you have a prediction, great. If you don't, that's fine as well. Yeah, let me start by saying I'm, I'm excited, really excited about this this fight. It, it's uh, it's going to be a blast. Yep, and definitely. I mean, you, you have two great wrestlers. You have Usman, you have... Yeah, it, it, it's going to be, you know, two great wrestlers going at it full speed. I, it's hard to predict, um, you know, will, will they be able to take each other down or will the wrestling neutralize and we'll see a stand-up fight? I, I really can't tell. I'm just super excited about it. And, uh, you know, my advice would be to, to tune in uh, UFC 245 because it will, it will be a, an exciting night. Absolutely, for sure. Three titles on the line then. Also, Max Holloway against Alexander Volkanovsky from Australia. And Amanda Nunez, the double champ, or champ champ as she calls it as well, uh, defending against the Dutch woman, Jermaine Durandamy. Being that that is going to be in Las Vegas, and you're training in Vegas, can I assume you're going to be at that fight? 100%. I oh. wouldn't miss it. Awesome. Or anything. So I'll I'll be there and I'll be watching and I, I can tell you I'm excited. I'm really excited about this. Absolutely. Well, we are going to be there also in press row for the MMA Power Hour. So yeah, if I see you there, I'd love to shake hands and say hello in person. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. So in the other fights, those are interesting as well. They're further away from your division. Uh, any any opinion or thoughts on Max Holloway versus Volkanovski or the women's fight? Uh, Again, I'm excited about the matchup. Uh, I, I'm ha really, really having a, a hard time picking fights here. Right. Like my uh, my record in the <laughs> I'm not a gambling man. I hear you. I would rather stay out of that and just enjoy the show. And you know, three uh, three titles on the shot here. It, it's amazing. It's a uh, yeah. Absolutely. It's Christmas. Absolutely. It's going to be amazing. And you know what? I remember one card that I watched three title fights on. I think it may have been two years ago, and all three titles changed hands. And I remember, I think I had predicted uh, uh, that, I think on this show, I had predicted that two of them I was almost sure would change hands, and the third one I thought was a very good chance of changing hands. And in this situation, I think it's the same. I think uh, I think two of them. I think I think we're going to see two titles change hands, and then possibly a third. It would be insane, but you never know. It's definitely going to be crazy uh, to see and some amazing action. You are in that division with the man himself, Habib Nurmagomedov. He it looks like has signed once again to go up against Tony Ferguson. This is uh, a fight. 
they call very snake bitten, if you understand that term. Uh, United States meaning quite unlucky. Four times the fight was scheduled, four times the fight was canceled. Uh, I just can't believe that'll happen this time. If it happens this time, they'll never make that fight again, which would be absolutely a tragedy because they're the two best guys there. I know you're not big at making predictions, but I feel that fight will be a very competitive fight. Do you, do, do you feel the same at least or, or differently or, or no opinion? Well, great, great, great matchup. Um, picking a winner of that fight, if Tony Ferguson signs the, the contract, right? Yes. Um, I'll have Khabib as the winner. Yeah. Uh, I mean, his his wrestling, his grappling is is outstanding. Yeah. Uh, I I know and understand Tony is a, a great fighter, but I think he will, I think he'll be in trouble. Yeah. I think uh, Khabib will will take the win. Yeah, he very well could. I think this may be the most balanced opponent Khabib has fought, and I think Tony did you know compete in college. Uh, in Michigan, I don't know that it was Division One school, but he was—he's a, a good wrestler, and his jiu-jitsu is good. His movement is amazing. His punches are are uh, really hard, and his elbows are very sharp. They did a kind of a, a collage of the faces of Tony Ferguson's last six opponents, and they're kind of a bloody mess. But to get that in Khabib, uh, it would be uh, very hard indeed. Do you ever do you look that far ahead? At this point, thinking that perhaps after three or four more fights, or two or three, or whatever it may be, that that you would be in the mix there, or do you try not to think uh, that far down the line? I always try to uh, to keep my focus right in front of me. You know, um, I have a training coming up here in a, a couple of of minutes. Uh, that's where my focus is right now. Um, the only fight that matters for me is the next fight. Uh, that's honestly how I feel. When it comes to my potential, I, I honestly believe if I have the right guidance, if I have the right sparring, the right trainers, uh, I believe I have the potential to beat anyone in the world in the lightweight division. So, you know, I'm here to to find out how good I actually can become uh, in MMA and, and I'm giving everything I got. So, let's see... Uh, Time will tell. Absolutely. Very well stated, my friend. I think it's going to be amazing to see, and I would love to see you in that mix down the line. I think uh, I think that would be tremendous, and I think you have the background and the attitude to do it. Let me tell my producer to switch it to uh, UFC lightweight. Sure Dog had mentioned welterweight, and uh, this was uh, Mark's background, but he's competing at lightweight as he did in his pro debut. Mark, I really want to thank you so much, man. For, uh, jumping on here. I'm going to give my producer a chance to change that and uh, sharing your insight, man. Uh, you know, you definitely seem like a really, really nice guy. You're with a great camp. I've had all the respect in the world uh, for Randy Couture and had some mutual friends with him and uh, and uh, Martin Kampman, someone I always expected. So, you know, I uh, I look forward to seeing you in Vegas. I, uh, I definitely plan on cheering for you. Our whole team here will. Uh, you don't have your next fight signed or, or do you? No fight planned yet, but uh, you know I'm using the time here to to improve, become a better version. So, you know, staying ready so so I don't have to get ready. Absolutely, that's the key. Well, we will look out for your next fight and definitely make sure to promote it when uh, you come on. Uh, how can people support you on social media? Is there a place that you tend to look more in your busy schedule, Instagram or uh, or Facebook or Twitter? I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, and you know people are. Welcome to tune in. It's Mark the Olympian, Madsen, uh, all over. So people are welcome to tune in and, and follow my journey in, into the MMA universe. Fantastic. Well, we'll be doing that. And uh, you've just earned a lot more fans uh, today, my friend. And I uh, want to thank you once again. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Keep up the great work you're doing. Likewise. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good